So today on Nation, we're talking about bookkeeping. Yes, I know. It's such an exciting and fun topic, but you are lacking in what you're doing. Hopefully you'll get a thing or two. Maybe you're awesome at it, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on, everybody? Jersey here from WCR, windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Thanks for checking us out. If it's your first time, have a look around. Hopefully you like everything. Hopefully it's better than a cat video. And hopefully you want to go back and listen to everything and binge all the episodes. We're at 140 episodes, all 30 minutes long. We have over 200,000 downloads. So go check it out. Hopefully things are awesome and uh, you become a regular listener. But if you are already a regular listener, if you're one of the cool kids, one of the nation, somebody who does all that, thumbs up every video, and most importantly, you buy your supplies through me, shameless plug, what's up? It's because of you that I have brand name shoes on my feet right now. Thank you very much. And if you want to be a customer of mine or let me be your rep, which I want to be your rep, all you need to do is give me a call, 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone. So call or text me, put everything in your cart, text me, be like, yo, Jersey, your nose is crooked, but put my order in. At the end of the show, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off. Uh, you'll get free shipping also, but you got to put that in through me. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. So like I said, today we are talking about bookkeeping, which is something that we don't talk about very often because it is a huge pain point like taxes in general. And uh, I'm visiting with somebody who actually knows what they're talking about. So it makes it way better because I don't. But what's going on, man? How are you doing, Josh? Thanks for having me. I think, Thanks. so you don't, I, I think, you you know, you maybe don't talk about bookkeeping because usually it's boring as hell. I think it's well, fair that, to say that. But, that too. Like, we're going to spice it up. <laughs> we're going to spice it up. Nice. It's one of those things that, uh, you know, in every business, whatever the business is, whatever you're doing or selling, like there's points of it, you're like, ugh, like I have to do that. I have to clean the toilets in my office, like that kind of thing. Like you don't want to do it. Like that's bookkeeping. I know that you have a passion for it, but it's just so bad. I get so lost and I just am so scatterbrained on it. So it's nice that there's people like you around. Hey man, I'm, I'm happy being a unicorn. I'll take it. The <laughs> there weirdo. you go. But, like, well, for anybody who's a useful weirdo, that's, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> it's better than the regular kind. That's right. Yeah. yeah, totally. So for anybody who doesn't know who you are or what you do, give us like the elevator pitch, like the synopsis of you. Oh man, that's deep. So Dan Plata, <laughs> I'm the CEO of Blue Sky Services, and uh, we're a bit of a unicorn ourselves. We're kind of an anomaly. We have window cleaning. I'll say we have exterior cleaning businesses, mostly <laughs> residential, a little bit of commercial. We have that in a couple locations. We also have maid service businesses in a few locations across the country. So we've got four different operations. We turned that into uh, kind of an accidental administrative service business where we built these capabilities and then we had friends in the industry who were like, hey, you guys must hire a lot of people. Can you like run some ads for me and see what happens? And then we did and they got people and they're like, well, what do we owe you? And I'm like, hey, Spear. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, and, but, but seriously, we didn't have any idea how to charge anybody because we were just helping friends out and then they wanted to pay us. And so all of a sudden we realized, oh, shoot, we have another business. Um, and so I'm, I'm a nerdy accountant by trade and I do all of our own bookkeeping and same thing bunch of guys said hey can you look at my P&L and I was yeah would love to uh and same thing just what do you what do I owe you yeah whatever you want and uh so here <laughs> we are now we have a couple uh couple different administrative services that we're helping a lot of people out with and having a real good time doing it nice nice I like that the accidental business thing uh there's a, a lot of us that get into like add-ons that way not necessarily separate businesses but all of a sudden somebody's like oh well while you're here can you clean the gutters now you're a gutter cleaner. So I totally get that. Accounting though, or like bookkeeping in general is not the thing I ever want to accidentally stumble into though. It's a little dry. It can be a little dry. <laughs> now, are you in like uh, bookkeepers forums and Facebook groups? Are they as awesome as the window cleaning and pressure washing ones? I have my own because I don't think they usually are. So I started <laughs> bookkeeping beer and BS. So Josh, we're both from Wisconsin. So we already yeah. talked a little bit about this before we went on, but like there's a bit of a beer drinking culture in Wisconsin and I embrace it. Like yeah. it's, it's fun. It's, it's cool. You can do bookkeeping and have a beer while you do it. Like it's kind of like bowling. 
Um, yeah. <laughs> maybe I should have been bookkeeping bowling and BS. Ooh, um, yeah. But uh, so yeah, we we get we get on once a week. We do a P and L review or just try to put some content out there and have fun doing it. BS a little bit and drink a beer and see what we can make out of it and hopefully help some people out. So nice. Yeah, if you're not from Wisconsin, in Wisconsin everything revolves around drinking, and then you figure out something to do to do while drinking. So you yeah. know if you're going you know snowmobiling or uh, hunting or whatever it is. It's to go drink, but you're doing something else. In the rest of the world, which I've only recently found this out, you find stuff to do and then implement drinking maybe in that activity. It's very backwards. Yeah. Well, the, you're saying the rest of the world is backwards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. It's, it's not natural here. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So, give us, let's, let, let's start off with just saying some kind of things. Like, what's the number one mistake that you see people like what is what is it in our industry? What is that one thing that you see like almost everybody making or it's super common? On the bookkeeping end specifically yeah. or just in general? Well, in general and bookkeeping, like what's the biggest mistake that I want something to resonate with people and be like, oh man, crap, that's what I do. Uh, biggest mistake that I see, and I actually get this from seeing people's books is paying employees hourly instead of commission. Uh, and kind of at the same time, sending too many people out together uh we find paying commission and sending people out solo unless there's obviously a safety concern the guys that implement that business model with individual technicians commission-based pay kill it they crush really? it really totally really? so you're an advocate for commission base 100 that's huge because i've always been the opposite where commission just is like it seems like there's just too much headaches and there's a, there's a school of thought to each of them. If you pay hourly, well, then maybe they drag it out longer to get paid more. But if you pay them commission, maybe they go too fast because they know that they'll make more money. They can get on the next job or what. So that's interesting. Yeah, you, so you, kinda, you always have to like pick the thing you're going to manage. And if you pay hourly, you have to manage their speed. And if you pay commission, you have to manage their quality. Like you're that. always going to, there's no like win, win, win. Like there's always going to be something. The, what I see works best when you pay people commission is when you have bad quality, they have to go redo it and they have to redo it for free. Like it's mm -hmm. on their time. And so they've already been they paid for the job. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. made the money when the, when the revenue got paid, but if they have to go back out and redo it, the drive time going out, working it, coming back is, it's just eats away at all the commission they made. So they're putting mm -hmm. in hours and they're basically not getting any, they're just eating away their commission. And yeah. they we had one guy one time, he was, the job was 45 minutes away. He finished it, came back. We got a call from the customer that he missed a few window panes. Hey, Renee, you're heading back out, man. Uh, like, I know you got an hour and a half of driving and like three windows to clean, but yeah, don't do that again. Like, you're yeah. going to do a good job next time. So, yeah, one of those and they learn pretty quick. Yeah, no kidding. So, now do you think that the employee themselves make more money doing a commission also? Or what other benefits are commission based compared to salary I mean, or hourly? The right type of employee does for sure. Mm. Um, they just go get it. And there's, I mean, like I see it from our top producers, they don't walk, they jog. Like if they're, if they forgot something in the transit, they're just so much more intentional about every movement. They step off the ladder and they're already like leaning it back and moving. We train safety, 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 obviously like work as hard and fast as you can do a good job and don't get hurt. Like you have yeah. to do all three of those, or you can't be a good window cleaner and you can't work at blue skies. If you're not good at all three of them, we yeah. find, uh, you can't like people are either fast or they're not. You can teach them how to be safe. You can teach them how to use the equipment. You can teach them how to do a good job, but you need to find people that are fast. Some people can just move fast and some yeah. can't. And we yeah. just want to find the ones that can move fast because we can teach them everything else. You can't teach hustle. Like that's, yeah. uh, that's, the, that's the, the line. You can't teach hustle. But what, what other thing with commission then is there that would stop somebody from doing commission I think it's a little tricky to, to calculate at first. Like it sounds complicated. Yeah. Once you get it, it's done. And, and you, there, there's for sure a little bit more administrative work. It's not just how many hours did you work and here's, here's how much you made. You still need to track hours legally if they're employees. And now you need to have a, you know, a spreadsheet or something where you can put in how much revenue they made, what their commission rate is, and calculate it. And then you kind of need to compare the two and basically what you end up doing is you pay the higher of the two. Cause if you know, whatever you put the hourly floor at, let's say your minimum wage where you are is 15 bucks an hour. And so naturally you have an hourly floor there. If, if for some reason their commission was below that, you still have to pay them that hourly rate. So yeah. it gets a little complex. There's a little more admin time, 
but you make up for it big time on your productivity savings. And I, I maybe I nerd out on it because I'm a finance guy, but like I want to look at my cost of goods sold and I want to be dialed in. And the best way to dial that in is to know that every time a job goes out, my guy makes 25% commission. And that like, that's super repeatable. Yeah. If I pay him hourly, that percentage is all over the place and it kind of messes with my business model. And I don't yeah. like people messing with my business model. <laughs> I love, I mean, the, the idea of commission in general is pretty awesome because that's how you can grow. If you need to send, like you said, 45 minutes away, maybe your zone is only 15 minutes away right now because you're paying hourly. If you switch over to commission, now you can go a little bit farther away. Again, don't screw your employees by sending them out four hours away because they're not going to be employees anymore. But you could start growing that way, building your route. That's why a lot of you know fish and those other guys where are route focused are commission because they can grow that way. You're not limited to timing and you're not paying somebody in a truck. I always, always send two people in a truck. And the downside is that if I send somebody out 45 minutes away, it's an hour and a half there and an hour and a half back of labor. I have to pay for three hours of labor, regardless if they get the job done or they canceled or they weren't home or whatever. I still got to pay that. Yeah. So there's a lot of benefits to the the commission side of things. And we do to that point, if, if a job is so far away, we charge an added fee. And then if it's a little farther away, we charge, charge an added fee and the guy makes commission on that. So it's expected that he might have to go up to like 20 miles from the office, but we're going to build a route that has jobs going out and jobs coming back. So it's not Mm -hmm. like drove 20 miles, drove 20 miles. Um, hopefully it's like drove 10 miles, then drove another 10 and then 10 back to get them, you know, like trying yeah. to stage it. Obviously you can't control where your customers live, but in a perfect world, you can kind of build that route. Right. right? Um, and to exactly what you said, cause we struggled with this on our home cleaning business forever. Uh, we had two person teams in that business and we looked at exactly what you were saying, like the double drive time every time, you know, if, if a team of two was going to do four houses in a day, They essentially had 10 drives when you add it all up, like counting one drive for each person versus if each person just did two houses on their own, it's six drives. So you almost save 100, like it cuts your cost in half by just sending them out solo. If you can do it, you know, safety is the big thing. Like, can, can they still perform the job safely? And if so, you save a ton of money sending them out solo if they can handle it. We had a guy once that um, the big joke was, I don't know what was wrong. If there's something that was actually wrong, but we razzed about it. But he went to the bathroom a lot, you know, that kind of bathroom. And yeah. I said, every time you go and take a dump, I'm paying two people to sit there and wait for you to take a dump. Like it costs me money every time you do. So <laughs> yeah. I totally, totally understand that, that side of it. Yeah, that is a, so, I've never thought of it that way, but that's pretty funny. <laughs> so this time of year too, now this sh- uh, episode is being recorded in February. So the terrible three letter word, is coming up tax time is coming up what are people right now when they're handing you their books like what are they missing when it comes to tax classification or their year end or like what is now for you like what what does it look like so the big thing that we see and i'm like all right everybody get ready because i'm gonna say an accounting term and i hate using accounting terms because they (laughs) even drive me nuts um but it's the balance sheet we all kind of get hung up on our P&L. That's where like our results end up. The balance sheet is kind of our statement of net worth. So it's all the things that we own, our assets. It's all the things that we owe, our liabilities, and then kind of whatever's left over after that. So what happens is guys buy vehicles, equipment, whatever, um, and it's a capital asset. You can't expense it on your P&L, which means you don't get the tax deduction for it. It goes on your balance sheet. And then at the end of the year, your CPA uses uh, what's called depreciation to expense that and reduce it. But if you're not capturing those on your balance sheet or not getting the loans recorded correctly and and like taking the interest expense deduction, just like on your personal taxes, your mortgage payment, you can deduct all of the interest of that on your personal taxes. You do the same in business. You can't deduct the payment of the loan, but the interest portion of it you put on your P&L and that gets missed by so many people. Yeah. Um, so it's fun. We can like start bookkeeping for somebody and be like, look at, yeah, you're paying us, but we just saved you thousands of dollars right off yeah. the bat. Yeah. No kidding. Uh, that that's by the way, uh, your blue skies.com forward slash WCR is going to get you in to the, um, basically your services, look around all yeah. that fun stuff. So, uh, definitely write that down and check it out. But 
now's the time that people are going, like you have a story of somebody that had came to you and their accountant screwed everything up, but you have to get a lot of that now where, especially not even now, I'm talking about March, you know, beginning of April where people are like, I need to like help, help figure it out. Like, is this, yep. is this the, the, the worst time of year for you too? Well, I mean, it's the best time of year for me because well. <laughs> I love it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, you know how, um, I mean, literally there's those things that like you don't need to even get paid for and you just love doing for people. Yeah. Uh, like I thoroughly enjoy somebody coming to me. And actually this year I've had a few where they come to me and be like, I think everything's good to go. I want to use you going forward because, you know, you're in the service industry. You get it. You know what we got to do. My last guy didn't. Can you look stuff over? And I start like peeling the onion and it's like, uh oh, like you might have to refile last year's taxes because none of this, like everything is messed up, but they uh, don't know it. Right. Cause they don't know what to look for and know what to yeah. look at. So, um, I don't, I don't dislike it in that I can add so much value to somebody that doesn't want to do it, doesn't like to do it, you know, doesn't know how to do it. Um, that's like my secret superpower is digging into somebody's books and hopefully getting things right for them and saving them a ton of money and a ton of hassle and then getting them, you know, going forward. So the, nice. like the coolest ones are they'll come to me and I'll talk about it and we won't even have done anything. And they just go like, Oh, it just feels like 10,000 pounds have been <laughs> taken off my shoulder. Cause this has been like oh. hanging over my head and I just needed to know that somebody could do it and you yeah. can do it. So just please take it. So oh. it's awesome. So now what, what can you do? I know you're not technically a CPA, so taxes aren't really your thing, but what can you do to help people get prepared for that? You said you work with uh, CPAs now. Uh, what is a process? I come to you and say, hey, here's my year end. I also need everything filed. Like what's going to happen? So whenever we take on a new client, our first thing is just kind of getting it into our mold, the chart of accounts that we use to measure everything out, put it into like the industry best metrics and measuring ways that we can set it up for somebody um we set that all up and then we start working on their balance sheet like i said because that's usually the thing where if i ask you like hey what you know what do you own what what assets do you have they start listing stuff off and i'm like you know that's not on here that's on here <laughs> but the that's like not at that value that never got depreciated um so immediately i that's just one thing we've learned is we always got to double check that like we can't trust and, and i mean I'll be honest, I've taken books from CPAs that are as bad as anything I've seen and they should be in jail. I mean, wow. like, like terrible. I don't like, I don't know what, you know, how they got to where they were at and, and still have clients. But so that's the first thing is like, we got to look at the history and just make sure that everything is good and that it's, that you're good to go for 2019 taxes. So that's, that's kind of yeah. where we're at with all of our clients now. And then we just put them on a maintenance program where we're bookkeeping every week for them. We check in every week, our account managers, even if we don't even have any questions, we just say like, hey, Josh, your books are looking good. Everything's up to date, good to go. But it's just that communication so they know we're on top of it. At the end of the month, we reconcile all the accounts and make sure that QuickBooks has what the bank has and the credit card and all that. And then we do a P&L analysis that shows all the buckets I mentioned earlier, kind of how we measure stuff, the percent target they should shoot for. And then it kind of stoplights it for them. It'll be, we'll color code it red, yellow, or green. If they hit the mark, you know, missed it, whatever the case is. Yeah. Um, and it seems like that report card to measure right at the end of every month is, is a huge value. Yeah, that, I think that's where a lot of people just fail in general is they don't track things, just things in general. So they go, man, we're doing great. This, oh, we're doing, And then they all of a sudden they're like, why don't I have any money? Or why is my tax bill so high this year? Or, you know, where did I? And then all of a sudden it's too late. You know, if you don't yep. jump on stuff like this, it's too late. And again, if it's something that somebody doesn't want to do, which a lot of bookkeeping, you know, tax, tax prep, all that stuff is just not something that is fun. People don't want to do it. And then they leave it to the side and then they end up screwing themselves and it's too late then. It's, if there is a hierarchy of things to procrastinate on, bookkeeping wins. Like yeah. bookkeeping <laughs> hands down will always get procrastinated. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's good when I always say like people hate cleaning windows. That's why we're a luxury business. Like why people want to hire us to clean windows because they hate it so much. That's bookkeeping. Like <laughs> you just happen to be doing something that window cleaners hate to do. And that's bookkeeping. Yep. Yep. That's nice. exactly right. I'll take it. Yeah. No kidding. So this time of year being that you're kind of like slower, you're in Wisconsin, there's, you know, it's, it's off season, which people who are not from Wisconsin don't quite understand that 
For us, it was like around Thanksgiving was kind of the last of it. And then we had trickle houses all season, but like very, very few. But then we didn't have like full bookings again until like late April. Yep. And that's just Wisconsin. It gets so just cold and shut in that you, you kind of, you know, that's all you're doing. But, but this time of year, what, what are you doing to help people that want to get clients? Like it's preseason, right? If somebody needs to get people hired, now's the time to do it because they have to prepare for the season. Like what does now look like for somebody who, like myself, I want uh, new employees. I need two new employees this year. What are you going to do for me? Yeah, so it's funny you bring that up. I just in the last week we started running our own window cleaning ads. I mean, it's so one quick correction. I'm in Minneapolis. I'm really close to Wisconsin. That's right. Still, that's right. I'm from Wisconsin. I still, I'm going back there like as soon as we get off of here. But it, I mean, it's all the same stuff. We're just buried in snow and ice, and you know, like you said, we drink beer and then we <laughs> find something to do. So I'm gonna drink some beer and probably go ice fishing. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but on the recruiting end, so in Minneapolis, we're not like you said. It's gonna be. April before we're really going we're recruiting right now like we need to know who our A players are going to be if they're A players we're going to find something for them to do they'll be out raking roofs we'll like we'll, we'll yeah. have them shovel some snow we're going to find the A players right now um it's never that like you should always be kind of recruiting and it's never too early to really start and put the pedal down obviously there's some like trajectory that you need to manage with the really good A players that they need to understand it's not going to be full bore for a little bit yet but yeah. we're starting right now. So, and I'll say we have a lot of clients that are starting right now too. We, we didn't expect to have January be a strong month in our recruiting business. And it was, it was actually pretty massive. So a wow. lot of people are really like starting to pick up already, especially down South. And that kind of starts working its way back. Yeah. Um, most of what we get this time of year is what we call a guaranteed hire, which is just, I need a guy. I need somebody. I don't need a long-term program or solution like just first I just need a guy yeah um, and so that program is uh it's kind of our if we have like a good better best that's our good it's we're running the ads we're doing the filtering we have we have some um some application assessments that we made that are just for our industry that really like get to the nuts and bolts and kind of weed out the slack so our goal is to get 100 applications and get a couple out of that. Um, yeah. That's just how many you need to get to find a really good player. So we're doing that for the guaranteed hire. Once we find a few of them, we get them in touch with the hiring manager, the CEO, or you know the owner, and let them take it from there. We try to, one of our goals is to make it so the applicant doesn't really realize it's us. They just think it's the business owner the whole time. So it just gets yeah. that relationship right from the start. Um, for guys that know that they're going to be hiring throughout the year or for people in the like the home cleaning industry or something where you don't have those big seasonal dips, we have annual packages where that system that we manage for our clients has an onboarding function and kind of an HR function where when they hire somebody, they can send the W-4, the I-9, all the paperwork and policies and whatever. When they hire somebody, it's all in there and we can yeah. manage the back end of it. So they just get rid of the paperwork nightmare. And so they'll pay a monthly fee to keep that. And then we can do recruiting for cheaper because we're kind of always working for them. Yeah. Uh, so we do those. We have a seasonal way of doing it. And then we have a, every month we're recruiting and hiring for people kind of nonstop. And we call that the all-in package. And like I said, that's more for the home cleaning industry or just industries, maybe guys down south that don't have nearly as much seasonality. Yeah. They pretty much know they're going to have some turnover and be hiring all the time. Nice. See, that's another thing that people just aren't a fan of is hiring. And like you said that you got to have, when you're trolling, your net has to have some pretty big holes, like one out of 10 people you'll maybe do an interview with even. So I, I think your numbers are right on for those for sure. Um, yeah. But what's the number one mistake that people are doing when they go to hire? Like what are people messing up? Um, they will write defensive job ads. That's usually <laughs> the mistake. So you Our, better show up and I don't hire people who are lazy. And yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's like negative, negative, like you can't do this and you won't do that. And we don't tolerate this. Here, apply here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's not so, the time to tell people the rules either. Yeah, yeah, so so, and the reason why is they don't have a system to do that for them. So they have to do it right at the get-go, which means any A player is going to bypass that job ad right from the get-go. Like, man, nah, that doesn't sound like the culture I want to work for. Yeah. Um, and it's not, I mean, like, if the goal is to 
you know, shrink that 10 down to one, that's a sure way to do it. Like you'll, you'll weed out people for sure. You just might weed out the wrong people. So the way we do it, I, I refer to it as gold mining. So actually, uh, that's what I call, I, I know nothing about mining gold. So if you know anything <laughs> about mining gold out there, this is just an analogy. Uh, so we try to get as much rock into the hopper as we can get. We don't care what it looks like. We, we just know that like there's gold in these there hills and we're going to go get it. <laughs> we need to get as much rock into the system as possible. We're going to write a job ad that is just out of this world. Like the cult. And, and we always start, we, we don't really mention the job until the end. It's why should you come work for us? So uh, all about the culture. Yeah. How, how is this job going to be done? Like if you're in sales, here's how you are successful. If you're a window cleaner, here's how we do the work. Oh, by the way, you know, it's Jersey Josh's window cleaning over here. And that's in, you know, apply here. So it has nothing to do with the business itself. It's about why would you love to work here? How do we work? How do we take care of our clients? Here's who we are. Um, which is a, a Simon Sinek model of why, how, what kind of like flipping around the sales model. And we, and we treat recruiting just like selling. So we get in as many applications as possible. And then we let our assessments and the system do the work rather than like writing this negative job ad to try to weed people out. We'll spit out just a couple after the end. I mean, everything is scored. And if it scores below a certain level or they don't hit the knockout questions right and they say yes and we needed to know or they said no and we needed a yes, we just never, we, we never know that they even applied. Like yeah. we just don't waste any time with them. We work on like the few good ones that made it through. Um, and I, and I think this is starting to get more and more common, but once they get to that point, um, unless we're super desperate and I've totally like, I can't lie, I've been in this, this spot here before, but if we have the luxury of having some time or some additional capacity that we don't need somebody like yesterday, we will do a communication flip where we will email them and tell them to text us or text them and tell them to email us rather than us just reaching out and trying to set up an interview with them. Yeah. It, it creates this like precedent where if we try to do the setup, all of a sudden we're the one going out of our way to do the work. And once you start establishing yourself as the one that needs to do the work, it just seems like it's always really hard to get them to do the work and yeah. you keep chasing them around and chasing them around and, until you fire them. But if yeah. <laughs> we can set the precedent from the get go, that's like, Hey, thanks. We thought you're great contact us this way which in one way is you're like well you just contacted me like why do i need to contact you um but it puts the work back on their side of the table and we want to keep them showing that they can do the work because that's what we're going to need them to do once we hire them so yeah in 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 all of my ads i would always make sure that i would say you have to put the subject line as i would always use i am awesome i would say you have to put i'm awesome in the subject line and a lot of people don't do that. You instantly just throw them away. Like there's people who yep. just don't read ads and don't care. And you can find that out really pretty quick. If you say, if you text somebody and say, Hey, email me this and they don't, or they just text it back to you. They didn't read. They're not yep. following directions and they don't care. Yep. Yep. That's, that's a great way to weed them out. Yep. I like that though. That's again, hiring sucks. We've talked about employees a ton of times. If you want any of this stuff, like I said, it's uh, your blue skies.com forward slash WCR to take a look. But now you are friends with Bobby Walker. We've had Bobby on the show quite a few times. You I'm just sorry. went, I'm sorry to hear that. I know. Uh, I, I, I didn't mean to bring it up in, in public that you're friends with him either, but you know, uh, <laughs> but no, um, you actually just got back from response at con too. Are you going to the huge convention this year? I'll be at the, I actually sent that a boxer today to check in to see nice. what because we're working on some stuff so yeah wow. i'll be at the huge convention oh look at that that was like that was like insider info right there like you're working on some stuff i can't tell you what it is but yeah so maybe yeah. i'm just lying and we're not working on anything i don't know <laughs> i'm still waiting for that to get back to me we, we've been scheming we, we had to scheme nice nice that that's the best things come out of scheming that's right. actually usually the best things come out like at these events where a bunch of you're just hanging out like sitting back just talking about nothing and all of a sudden something comes up and then like the bubbling happens and yeah. awesomeness incurs so you know i think thad's awesome i don't know but like you could see thad being from wisconsin he just yeah seems well, he might be from wisconsin he, he is like um he'll he's a presentable hillbilly that's oh, like what that's he nice. is so yeah. yeah he he's like um if you think about wisconsin he's not you know he's not a madison he's like you know 
where they can do both roles. He's I've yeah. I've seen him kill a snake and it with no shoes on with a stick. You know, like <laughs> that's sad. That's sad. And uh, yeah, he's he doesn't watch the show. You can talk about him all you want, but oh, perfect. Well, yeah. I have nothing else to say. I think you nailed it. <laughs> but that's he's cool. From, you're gonna he'd be, be from Sheboygan. I think Sh- Thad, <laughs> if he was, you know, Thad from Wisconsin, he's probably from Sheboygan. Uh, that's great. By the way, the, all four people from Wisconsin that watch your show are gonna like, like ah, local humor. I get it. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that that's awesome. Well, I'm glad that you do the stuff that none of us want to do because it just, you know, it it some of it sucks. And I'm telling you, the first time that I took everything, and every year I waited, and I I literally had the accountant. Ugh, if you looked at my books, I I bet you I could refile all seven years probably because the lady was horrible, and I knew she was horrible, but she was the friend you, of my dad. Yeah, once you have them, you're just like, oh, I just don't uh, even want to know. I know. And she would wait literally because she knew I was like a friend deal or whatever. I think I paid her a hundred bucks. It was, I knew it was bad. Don't, don't ever low ball your, your, your tax person, but it was like a friend deal. And all of a sudden, like April 10th, she'd call and be like, Oh, you owe like 16 grand. And I'm like, come on, yeah, come on like five lady. days. You couldn't tell me. Yeah. So I'm uh, completely in that. But the first time that I hired an accountant who I had for a whole year, he was like a, a guy who actually plan stuff he got me in different you know uh filing differently in uh different incorporations and things and then he ended up taking a controller job for one of the cities here i only got him for a year but when that happened i still was like you said i just the amount like i walked out of the office like this problem which i we're all in it now like the the pressure's on everybody's shoulders now and it's not for months when we have to actually get this all in you know but getting that off their shoulders and knowing you have a guy like taking care of it is just so absolutely the bigger a company is the more and more they start finding things to people to take care of the suck. And if you take care of the suck, not only are you happier, you have more time to do stuff that actually makes you money. Totally. Totally. One. So one question that I get a lot is, Hey, like, you know, I've been in business for about a year, this or that, like, when should I set up QuickBooks or when should I get a bookkeeper? And I, maybe I'm biased, but I'm like that, you should have done that right from the get-go. A year ago, like, yeah. When, when, when is there a bad time to have great information? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like now, right now, yeah. you should do it. Get it. The the the, the theory of yeah, the theory of a tree. When's the best plan, time to plant a tree? Was twenty years ago. The second best time is today. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. when you can get information. It, here's the other thing: is when people start, they don't quite understand the amount of information and what you can get. Like you talked about gold mining, what you can mine from information. Like you don't become an information nerd until usually like three to five years when you're like, I wonder about this. And I have no, I, all of a sudden you start running QuickBooks and all this other stuff and you start getting a guy like you who can de- decipher everything. Now all of a sudden you're like diving into your business and it's not just like, ah, cool. I got money in my bank account today. Like it's a whole nother ball game when you can really, really just open everything up. Yep. So why wait? Do it right now. Exactly. If you do want to do it right now, one more time, it's yourblueskies.com forward slash WCR is my code. and It'll get you in there and check out the awesomeness. But uh, it is February, so jump on, jump on it. Um, don't wait. Don't wait. But either way, I appreciate you uh, hanging out with me. And uh, can people join the uh, bookkeeping Facebook group too, or is nobody going to get anything that's not a bookkeeper from that? I mean, it's, it's right now we got like 300 some members and it's just all a bunch of service industry jockeys that we all, you know, like to <laughs> talk shop and goof around on there. And so we go on every Wednesday, you know, nice. sometimes there's a, we, we've been doing a lot of live P and L reviews lately. So we actually like take a real set of books and go through it. Oh, no um, kidding. So yeah. Check it out. Facebook bookkeeping beer and BS. It's a good nice. time. Definitely check that out. And uh, yeah, like I said, thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. Um, if you have not ordered supplies through me yet, here's shameless plug number two. My number is 862-312-2026. And every single day, if not every other day, somebody texts me and goes, I know you bugged me for my order. Well, fine. Here you go. Truly. I want to put your order and I want to put every order in for you. Let me be your guy. There are so many of you that let me do that. So high five to all of you. Um, 862-312-2026. Definitely, definitely, definitely check out uh, everything that we have to offer to and uh, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, because we do some posts there. It's a very cool interaction, some fun polls, and there's always giveaways, of course. Now, the moment that you've been waiting for. If you put your order in through me, all you need to say is beer and bookkeeping. 
you say those words, that's your code for 5% off and free shipping, but you have to order through me. Don't be that guy who puts the order in and then texts me and be like, yo, give me my 5%. I put the order in yesterday. It doesn't work that way. It has to be through me. And definitely let me know those codes. So give me a call, 862-312-2026. But most importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.